guys, just finished skinning the links there. Uh, got things cleaned up and <laughs> out of the cabin, so now we can focus on talking and not smelling that thing. We uh, we got done. We got our stents, so that's going to let us set a lot more link straps through the rest of the winter here. Uh, the tough part is always getting that first links because yeah. you don't have the sense. I mean, you've got some sense. We'll mix up a batch for another video probably, but it's not it's not the territorial scent that you want. It's just a scent. A, it's more of a curiosity scent that we use up to this point. We figured we'd just uh, touch on a few of the things while we were skinning there, like the fact that we, Shane wears gloves and I wear gloves in other videos normally. Yeah. You'll notice you didn't wear you didn't wear gloves in the porcupine video, right? But that we we had to skin it back at mom and dad's farm cabin. Yeah, so, so that was a little bit them. different. We used to do it all the time without gloves. Yeah. Uh, it's nice for dexterity. Uh, I was having a bit of trouble there towards the end around the eyes and the ears, the finicky work with the gloves riding up and just you can't really use yeah. the tips of your fingers very well, but. After some experiences, it's better safe than sorry, right? Yeah, I've run into problems. Now, the number one thing that the gloves is helping with is fleas. And there was a time, I guess, what would I have been, 11 or 12? Probably 11. 11 or, yeah, somewhere in there. Uh, Shane and I were doing some muskrat trapping, and we caught, well, I mean, you couldn't tell it was unhealthy or anything, but one of the fleas apparently had tularemia. I ended up getting a sore that opened up on my hand from being bit by one of those fleas while I was skinning the, the, the muskrat. And it was bad. It was about two weeks where I couldn't eat hardly anything. And um, the guy that would eat, would eat me for like hot dogs, he'd like a half dozen hot dogs, you would down to like a half a hot dog. Half a hot dog and that would last for, me all per, day. Yeah, per day. Yeah. So that was, that was pretty bad. Uh, I was one of three cases in Saskatchewan of tularemia that year so there's one claim to fame there <laughs> but uh, but that reminded us then uh well basically well tularemia it's a it's a cousin to the plague basically um less lethal thankfully but it's carried by fleas like the plague was so we learned then wear gloves it's not quite as nice for doing the work but it sure beats two or three weeks of down and out sickness yeah. so that's why we wear the gloves Something else that's really good to do with lynx is you can eat it. It's it's a nice white meat. You probably couldn't tell in that video very well. Um, mm -hmm. But it's nice and pink. And in this case, the meat wasn't so great. It was caught in that trap. Normally our lynx are live when we get to them. We use padded uh, leg holds. And so then you know that it's fresh meat. In this case, it had a few hours there where the body was cooling down. And then the way it was curled up, you couldn't hang it the way we normally would with the head down so the guts are in the chest uh, so it tainted some of the meat and so we're not going to eat that one but normally yeah. lynx is very good to eat so it's a good survival food I would recommend salting it if you were to eat it in a non-survival situation like salt like soaking it in salt water yeah because they are a predator and so they do have the uh, potential to pick up parasites and so it's good meat but just exercise some caution there yeah like with the porcupine we still salted it but it's not quite as n necessary because of what it's eating yeah it's eating trees vegetation that sort of stuff not picking up many worms from that lynx rely heavily on the hair population yeah which rabbits is i'd say pretty common through most rabbit populations have worms and parasites yeah so it's just really good to be careful with that kind of thing when eating lynx yeah. but but speaking of the yeah the, the, the lynx the hair diet. cycle population there that's sort of a cool story and a lot of trappers know it already actually I heard about it first from a trapper from Grandpa Grizz uh, that these the lynx have a cycle between seven and ten years uh, where you'll peak you'll have a really high lynx population and then all of a sudden you have no lynx the next year and this coincides with the snowshoe hare population you'll have a really high uh, snowshoe hare population one year and really high lynx. The next year you'll normally still have really high lynx but no snowshoe hair and through that year the rest of the lynx starve yeah. uh, or move but generally starve. Because I mean uh, it's point, important to note there lynx don't just eat the hares they also eat grouse and whatever else they can find. Yeah. So when the hares die off that was what got them to the high point yeah. But then once the hairs die off, they're still finding stuff to eat, but that dwindles very quickly when you have that big of a population. Yeah. Which is why it takes about a year for it to plummet and follow the hair cycle. Yeah. 
So it's it's a pretty cool cycle, and it's uh, it's not just a a, a, a trapper story. Uh, like I said, I heard from uh, heard about it from Grandpa Grizz to start with, but then I went. I'm just about done my biology degree, and it, I, that cycle has actually come up a lot of times in my classes. Where it's kind of cool because scientists this learned about this cycle through trappers. Uh, they went through trapping records of the Hudson Bay Company, and they started realizing that every 10 years or so the number of rabbit pelts turned in would be super high and the next year super low and then same with lynx the year that the rabbit pelts dropped off lynx were normally super high but the following year hardly any lynx pelts were turned in and so this happened over and over and over again and it's a regular cycle and we don't know exactly what causes it but one of the thoughts anyway is that um it's caused by the rabbits overpopulating and they eat all the underbrush they eat that that's what they feed on so they eat all this underbrush that also lets them hide from the lynx and then the lynx are able to catch them easier because this underbrush is gone and so lynx basically just gorge for a year wipe out the lynx populate or the rabbit population and then starve so it's um i mean that's that's not 100 percent proven that's just one of the thoughts based on a couple of experiments with uh, adding food to a rabbit population and keeping links out of a rabbit population, things like that. Um, and so that's one of the things that's really good about trapping is that that is a natural cycle and that, that that's great, but it's a tough way to go for these links. And so some of these links, I mean, yes, we're, we're killing an animal, but its option is a couple years late down the road, it starves to death. This is a very quick death. It's very humane compared to most of the ways that animals die in nature. Yeah. And uh, something else with that is, like the fact that we caught this lynx is really surprising because we're down at that bottom of that peak right now, or the bottom of that uh, cycle. Well, it's not the absolute bottom. A few right. years ago, we, we caught 19 lynx in one year. Yeah. And it was, that was the peak of that, but we'd already noticed our hair population was low. The next year, we caught one lynx. Yeah, and it was the only track we saw all year long. Yeah. And so that, so that was you, the bottom of the cycle. You imagine like a curve, that was at the top of the curve, and then it plummets and it almost flatlines for a couple of years. Yeah. And so now we're three years past that, we're just getting up, but it's we're, still at, we're still at the bottom. Yeah, we're still not seeing the number of uh, hair tracks that we were before, So, but there's more than there was at the bottom of the cycle. So we're getting some lynx, uh, far more than there was last year. We're seeing yeah. far more. So that's encouraging. So yep. we've got a few years here where the lynx is just gonna climb and it'll be good for us. And then uh, we're gonna kind of show the trap that we were using as well. Now, like I said, this is not our normal trap for lynx. Normally we'll use a leg hold uh, with rubber padded jaws so it doesn't hurt the foot. Um, and those work really well. We use an Ida Victor's. For those number three uh, soft catch mm -hmm. and they work great uh, all weather a uh, little piece of paper towel over top keeps them from freezing um, but we don't have many of them out we didn't think we had many cats actually until just a couple days ago so we didn't really bother setting much which is part but, of the population management yeah if we don't see a whole lot we're not we actually targeting try. them to try to kill a whole bunch so yeah so this trap though this is a wolverine trap it's a 280 LDL Magnum and we'll show you in a close-up it's got this extra bar a third bar for closing extra tight that dislocates the neck and cuts off the air super fast I mean certain animals it'll dislocate the neck and so it's basically this is a super fast kill trap yeah. and it's super powerful as well but it's um, it, like I said it's our Wolverine trap uh, in this case, I accidentally grabbed it. I thought I was grabbing the smaller size for fishers, and I got to that cubby and I pulled it out and realized it was our wolverine trap, and thought, well, we don't just want to leave the box empty without a trap, so we set this out in front of it. It was too big to actually fit in the box. We just had to kind of prop it out in front, and uh, yeah, I guess it was a big enough hole that it was very in inviting for the lynx, because he went right in, and like you saw when we walked up there, he never moved like this mm -hmm. this trap will spring when it sets off it'll spring forward and that was the only movement that lynx had basically just moving with the trap um 
that that set is kind of funny. It's been set every. Well, well it was yeah, it's funny because up on the ridge where it's set, yeah. where we used our Wolverine trap in our in a Fisher box. Fisher box targeting Martin. Yeah. It's on a, where Martin normally travel, and we caught a lynx. Yeah, and the, the funny part is it's not the first time that's happened. This trap's been set every year for the last three or four years. Yeah, and I mean, like most traps, you don't catch something in it every year. Uh, but the first year, we caught a lynx in that trap. Yeah. Uh, the same place, a uh, little later in the year, but we were pretty shocked. You come around that bend and look up and, oh, there's a lynx there. So that was the first year. Nothing in that trap at all after that until, until now. now with lynx number two. So this is our Martin Cubby with a, in a fisher box, in this case with a wolverine trap, catching only two animals in its history, and both of them lynx. It's a bit of a surprise, but uh, I think we'll be keeping that trap there. <laughs> it's a pretty good track record. <laughs> yeah. And if you guys want, at some point, we can, if we get a, a fresh lynx in the future, we can show you guys how to cook that up and eat it. Yeah. Because, I mean, and that one, I'm not concerned about it at all. It's not like the porcupine liver. Like, this, it's very, very good meat. Yeah, right? we've eaten it before. So for some of you southern trappers, um, southern Saskatchewan and into the states, you'll have mostly bobcats probably, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. And they're similar. So if you think of the, the cat family, feline family, it'd be like bobcats, lynx, and cougars in our neck of the woods. Uh, although very, very rare to have a bobcat this far north. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, cougars are obviously huge. They're much bigger than these. And stature-wise... Lynx is bigger than a bobcat. It stands taller, yeah. but it's built really light. Because if you imagine it's got to run through three, four, five feet of snow, yeah. it can't be sinking down. Yeah. Bobcats are built sturdier, and so actually a big bobcat will be heavier than oh, yeah. a big, Significantly big heavier mature than. lynx. Yeah. So. yeah, you'll notice in back when we skinned that one, uh, once that hide came off, there was nothing to that lynx. Like, yeah. it, when the hide was on, it looked like the body was that big around. Once it came off, the body was about like that. Like yeah. there was, there's nothing to them. And like Shane said, that's, that's because those paws need to act as snowshoes, but they can't carry a lot of weight. So when those paws spread out that all that hair, they can walk on top of the snow as long as their body's really light. So thanks for watching, and as always, like, comment, subscribe. If you have any yeah. questions or stories of your own, please post them in the comments. Yeah. We love hearing from you guys. Yeah, yeah. Let us know your trapping experiences. Um, surprise catches and again if you've got any questions let us know in the comments and we might bring them up in a future video here so and while you're here there should be a couple of video links showing up right away click on those and watch on through to some some other episodes if you feel like so thanks for joining us and we'll see you later have a good one see ya